guys and welcome back to reading club so today i'm going to read you daisy and the trouble with zoos chapter 19 and the last chapter chapter 19 when we got back to the zoo the zoo was on amber alert if a lion or a rhinosaurus had been missing then it would have been a red alert but as it was only a baby penguin it was just an amber one my mom's face was on red alert though when she gave in this back she said it was ever so embarrassing, and she was ever so, ever so sorry. And I hadn't meant any harm, and I just misunderstood what adopt an animal meant. Which isn't my fault. The zoo were okay about it. They said they were just pleased to have Vindus back. In fact, I'm not really sure what all the fuss was about. After we dropped Gabby and Dylan off, Mom's face went all kind of strange and funny looking. Then she started talking to herself. Out of all the moms in the world, guess whose daughter kidnaps a penguin from the zoo, she said. I decided I wouldn't say anything for a while, at least until we got back into the house and she'd had a cup of tea. Trouble is, her face still looked kind of strange and funny, even after a cup of tea, and after three crunchy creams. So I decided I'd go upstairs to my bedroom and play with my birthday presents for a while. The trouble with birthday presents is they're not as good as baby penguins. Even magic sets with actual wands aren't as good as baby penguins. So I wasn't really in the right mood to play with my birthday presents. After about an hour, I went back downstairs to see if mom's face had got any better. It hadn't, and it got worse. Daisy, she growled, don't you ever steal a baby penguin from the zoo again, she said. It's a good job it's your birthday, she said, or, or, well, I don't know what I'd have done. Then her face went even stranger and funnier, plus growlier. Promise me, Daisy, she said, promise me you will never steal a baby penguin from a zoo again, or a baby crocodile, or a baby elephant, or a baby anything. So I promised. I was going to double promise, but before I could say the words, our front doorbell rang. Nanny and Grampy had arrived with my special homemade birthday zoo cake. Chapter 20. The trouble with special homemade birthday zoo cakes is sometimes the penguins on the icing look like zebras, especially if the person who's done them is really old. Nanny said she'd done all the penguins on the icing without copying, but apart from them being black and white, they still look like zebras to me. The candles look like candles, though. And I had a really good time blowing out seven more all over again. Then everyone sang happy birthday again. And then Nanny and Grampy gave me another present. Nanny said it was only something small for my new bike, but it was brilliant. A real hooter that makes real loud hooting noises when you squeeze it. Mom said it would be like living with a sea lion. Grampy said he would fix it to my handlebars before they went home. And then he asked me to tell him all about the penguins I had fed at the zoo today. When I looked at Mom, her face had gone a bit funny again. But then she put her finger to her lips and smiled. So I told Nanny and Grampy about all the penguins I'd met, except one, one little one. Then I told them about the rhinosaurus, the lions, the meerkats, the flamingos, the pygmy goats, and all the other animals I can remember, including the fossa. And guess what? Nanny and Grampy hadn't heard of a fossa either. They hadn't heard of loads of the things that I learned at the zoo today. Before they left, Nanny and Grampy gave me seven birthday kisses goodbye, each. Then Mom let me have seven extra hoots on my hooter and asked me to have my bath and get ready for bed. Before she tucked me up, she read me a story. I wanted seven, but she said no. Then... She struck my forehead and asked me to promise her again that I would never adopt a zoo animal again without asking her first. 
So this time I double promised. In fact, I triple promised. But that's the trouble with double and triple promising after you've adopted a baby penguin. Even if I had a zillion promised, I still knew that Findus would be cross to be back at the penguin pool with Tiffany and all the other penguins. I bet you all the herrings and kippers and mackerels and sardines and <clears throat> pilsjards and goldfish in the sea that he'd much rather have come to my house to live on a packet of frozen peas with me. That's the end of this channel. I hope you enjoyed my readings of this book. And I'll come back later with a new and improved channel. So if you liked it, please click many likes and subscribe reading club. Bye guys.